Here are 8 ways to use Google Earth that every architect should know. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Google Earth is definitely an underrated platform. Once we understand its true potential, this tool can become an integral part of the design workflow for professionals and students. So in this video, let's look at them in detail. I'm Salman, an architect and illustrator. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon for notification. So let's get started. Now in case you didn't know, Google Earth is completely free and you can download it from the link in the description. Number one, we can use it to measure distances and areas. Let's head over to a street and try measuring the distance using the Google Earth tools. On the top, you have the ruler option. Click that and this will open a toolbar. Under the line category, choose your preferred unit. Draw a line on the map and this will show the distance in the tab. To make any adjustments, you can simply drag the line and you can use the clear option to clear it. This technique can be used to measure road distances, footpath or even measure the dimensions of buildings. Now to measure areas, you will have to head over to the polygon tool on the same tab. Set the units as you prefer and same as before, we will have to draw the outlines by connecting the points. As you do this, you will notice the perimeter and the area mentioned in the tab. This can be a quick way to get the units of your site and measure distances. Number 2, we can use it to measure building heights. To measure the height of the buildings, firstly, make sure the 3D building option is turned on. Let's zoom in to a building. Once again, we'll have to head over to the ruler option and this time we have something called 3D path. Click that and set your preferred units. Pick the points from the bottom to the top of the building. As you do that, you can see the height of the building in this tab here. An alternate way to do this is to use the elevation points given on the bottom right. Head over to the top of the building and look at the elevation that is provided. The elevation here is 563 feet and the bottom of the building is 16 feet. So that is the height of the building. And once we cross check that, we can notice that the measurements is almost the same on both the techniques. The measurements might not be very accurate, but this can be a quick way to get the heights of the buildings. Number 3, Google Earth can be used to create quick concept models. To start creating a 3D volume on your site, head over to the Polygon tool on the top toolbar. Rename it and let's create a polygon. Head over to the Altitude tab. Under this drop down, choose the relative to ground. Click Extend Sites to Ground and here let's set the height of the building. This will create your model on the map. We can also adjust the colors of the building change the opacity and this can be a really quick way to create concept volumes on your site. The best thing is you can directly import this as an image and make further edits in Photoshop like adding the sun path, viewing angles and so on. Using the same technique, you will also be able to create irregular forms like these. Number 4, we can create the elevation profile of a site using Google Earth. Open Google Earth and head over to your preferred location. I'm picking a spot here where there's a water body. Once you picked your location, you need to head over to this button which says Add Path. Click that and rename it. Now we need to pick two points on the Google Earth where we want to generate the elevation profile. You can head over to the second tab and you'll be able to change the color and width of the line that we created. Click OK and you'll be able to see the line we created on the left side. Right click on the name that we created and this will have an option called Show Elevation Profile. Click that and the elevation will be visible on the screen. As you pan through the elevation profile, this will show the exact location of the point on the line we created. The data shows the elevation with respect to the ground level. Number 5, we can place our SketchUp models inside Google Earth. To begin with, let's open our SketchUp file. I'm changing the style and the first thing we'll have to do is to remove the lines and planes which we do not want in the Google Earth. Once done, head over to File and you'll see the option called Geolocation. This option is only available in the new versions of SketchUp. Click Add Location and head over to the location where you want to place your 3D model. For this example, I'm choosing the Miami Beach. You can search the location on top and also switch between satellite and street map. Once you place the point in your desired location, click Select Region and this will create a rectangle. Adjust the rectangle and click Import. This will import the map image onto your SketchUp model. We can then place the model to align with the image. Once done, Head over to File, Export and 3D Model. Under the file type, we have to select Google Earth file, rename it and export. Let's now open Google Earth. All we have to do is to head over to File, Open and pick the file that we just saved from SketchUp. This will take you directly to the location on Google Earth and in a few seconds, your model will be displayed at the location. In case you want to make any adjustments, 
you can always go back to SketchUp, make the adjustments, save it once again and reopen. This technique can be highly beneficial when you want to create diagrams to show the context of your project. You can also export these directly as images and place them in your presentation. You can also switch between the ground level view and the model will still be displayed in ground level. You can also use these for isometrics or to show the front elevation of your project with the surrounding context. Number 6. We can create master plans with Google Earth. Now we made a detailed video on this topic so you can check that out from the iCard above. Let's begin by heading over to our site on Google Earth. For this example, I'm picking a site in Mumbai, India. Make sure that the view is towards north and there is no tilt in the camera angle. Hide all the layers on the left side and export it as an image in a high quality. Now open the image in Photoshop, create new layers and you can either use the brush tool or the pen tool to mark the water bodies and roads. To make this process easier, you can head over to this website called Stasi Maps. Pick the same spot as your site on this website export the image and place it on top in Photoshop. You can use this as a reference to trace all the roads and water bodies. Duplicate the base layer and adjust the hue saturation to display all the green areas more evidently. You can then use the color picker tool to pick all the green areas and duplicate them on a new layer. Create a color palette and match the roads, water bodies and the vegetation layer with the color shades. You can create new layers and change blend mode to multiply to add more depth to the water bodies. Add inner shadows to the road texture to create more depth. You can then mark the site and adjust the color saturation to have the final result. Number 7. We can create axonometric diagrams with Google Earth. We made a detailed video on this topic as well, so you can check that out from the iCard. Let's begin by navigating to our site on Google Earth. For this example, I'm picking the English Bay Beach. Pick a view that looks almost axonometric. You can export it as an image by clicking this button on top. Now open the image in Photoshop. Use the rectangle tool to create a rectangle and distort it to fit it in perspective with the image that we exported. Use the mask option to clip the image inside the rectangle. Let's add some solid colors on a new layer to create a base for the image. Duplicate the image on top and erase off the areas to make the image look three-dimensional. You can add textures to the edges and play around with the colors and saturation to get your desired result. Add text and distort them and you have the final result. Number 8. You can create drone shots of your site without using a drone. For this, we'll be using Google Earth Studio which is an alternative. Head over to Google Earth Studio and you'll have to sign in using your Google account. It'll then take you to the home page and we can start a new project from here. Click this arrow under the blank project option and you will see quick starts. The quick start will create templates which we can use to create the video. We have the zoom tool which will basically zoom into the site. The orbit option revolves the camera around the site. Point to point moves the camera from point A to point B. This one creates a spiral movement around the location. And finally, we have the fly to and orbit. Let's start with fly to and orbit. This template will ask you to select the site location and you can search that using this tab. You can move the cursor to pick the point as well and click the next option. You can see that the template has already created a video and will be able to customize them using these options. Let's click the next one. We can change the total length of the video in this tab and the next tab creates a timeline for the video. You can change the viewport on top and you will see the camera movement over the map. You can switch between two views to see the video and map simultaneously. Right below we have the timeline. If you are into video editing, you will already know how the timeline works with the keyframes. Keyframes are basically points set from A to B where the camera moves. In this template, we don't have to adjust any of these for now. Click the add attributes option and you can turn on time of day, clouds and more. These attributes will now be displayed on the main screen and you can use these to change the time for example, this will create the video in a night view. Once you are happy with the settings, you can click over the render option. You can rename the video file from top, change the frames, adjust the position of the watermark and also map style. Click submit and in just another 2 or 5 minutes, you will receive the video on your email. So that was it from the hidden hacks with Google Earth. 
I hope you found this video to be helpful and if it did, please hit that like button and share this with your friends. You can follow me on Instagram and the handle is right here. I'll see you on the next one.